We're at the beginning of our next round. Willow is going to be our first player. Our current situation has most of the action occurring at the magic box. Mr. Trick, our monster of the week, our third monster of the week is there. There's a townie there. We got a vampire and a demon there. We got clues at UC Sunnydale and Restfield Cemetery. We got a couple of vamps over here with Spike at the bronze. And we're already halfway full on our apocalypse track. So for Willow's first action, we are going to activate the location ability at the Summer's Residence to remove two wounds from the apocalypse track. Now we'll move on to Xander. I will have Xander use his special coordinate ability right away and choose Buffy. And Buffy will use the location ability to take two crosses from the item deck. There's one and two. Because I want her to bring those that one cross over to Xander. Now she is at four cards, so I'm only going to put one cross in her hand, put the other one in the discard pile, and then I have to shuffle the item deck because I looked at it in order to do his special coordinate. Uh, not his special coordinate action, but the location ability at the Shadow Valley Vineyard with Buffy. And Xander gets to take an action now. I want him to stay at the magic box. There's not a lot I can do there. I can't use the location ability because we have enemies there. I cannot search because there are enemies there. And I think I may have made that mistake in an earlier round where I searched while there were enemies at a location. I won't know until I go back to edit the film if I did or not, but if I did, I'm sorry about that, I made the mistake there. So the only thing I can really do is I'm going to use one of his basic actions, and I don't want to move away because I'm already where I want to be with that monster of the week. So I will fight at his location, and that will allow me to stun a vampire. Can't stun a demon with a regular fight action, but I can stun a vampire. Now bring us to Buffy, who has that cross, and I want to get her to Xander's location. I'm going to use my action to move Buffy to the magic box here with Xander. But in order to do so, because Mr. Trick is there, before a character can move into Mr. Trick's location, they must flip an unused action token face down. And I don't want to flip her special token, because that'll give me a move and a fight so I can get out of there. Because I lost one of my tokens right away. And I can use my free action, or a free action that can be used either before or after you flip a token. And you can trade items between characters at the same location freely. And I'm going to give this cross to Xander so he's ready in his next turn to take on our final monster of the week. Xander used his special token. So we have a vampire lurking at UC Sunnydale and a townie needs help at Rosedale Cemetery. They keep going to the cemeteries, don't they? So we got a couple of vamps here at UC Sunnydale and a townie at Rosedale Cemetery. That's down here in the southern part of town. If there are any vampires and demons sharing a location with each other, move them to separate locations. Player's choice. I think the only place I have a vamp and a demon together are right here at the magic box. 
but I don't think they're going to split up because the vampire is stunned and stunned vampires or stunned enemies it's kind of like they're not even there as far as applications in the game for example if I was down here at UC Sunnydale and both of these vampires were stunned I could still search or use the item the location ability because when they're stunned it's like they're not there I checked the rule book and the rule book specifically says that stunned baddies do not move and they cannot be moved by special abilities or any kind of events. So that vampire is not going to move. But the vampire and the demon are still sharing the location. So I would interpret that as the demon can move but the vampire is stunned and cannot move. So I would split them up and it says player's choice and it says move them to separate locations. It doesn't say separate adjacent locations, it just says separate locations. So I'm going to move this demon over here to the bronze. It seems I got a little bit ahead of myself there and I made some mistakes in these last couple of moves that I made. And you can see me pause at the end of that last um, section of video and I realized I had made some mistakes so I went back and I watched the last couple of minutes of the video and saw what I did. This token on Xander should not have been flipped over. When he took his action to stun that vampire that was part of his special ability. So that action would have came to him without using another token. And then what I did is I moved on to Buffy and did her turn before I did the event. It didn't hurt anything because we had a vampire go to UC Sunnydale and a townie at Rosedale. And then we split up the vamp and the demon that were here at the magic box. So that didn't change anything that would have happened. Buffy still would have moved from the Shadow Valley and then had to use an additional token to move where Mr. Trick was and still pass that cross to Xander. I think I have everything corrected that I made the mistakes with and that would end Buffy's turn and take us into Spike's turn. Spike is going to use his Vamp Out special ability to slay all baddies in his location because he has weapons. And that will take out two vamps and a demon. And since we killed three. That is going to add a wound to the Apocalypse track and trigger an event card. A demon terrorizes Glory's mansion and a vampire lurks at the Summer's residence. That's bad timing because I was going to use Willow to heal some more. But she's not going to be able to do that right away. What else do we have? If there is currently at least one vampire sharing a location with a character, add one wound token to the Apocalypse track. Well, Willow is sharing a location right now, thanks to the event card itself, putting us another wound on the Apocalypse track. It's Xander's turn. He's going to try to be the hero for the third time and take care of Mr. Trick. We need a cross and garlic, which he has a cross and garlic. We will discard those and do our event check. We need a pentagram or the triangle symbol or the all-seeing eye. Grab an event card and Wait till it focuses, and we are successful. Nice. We got the pentagram symbol, and that will take care of Mr. Trick. That was our third and final monster of the week, and Mr. Trick started at City Hall, so that's where our location of our clue will be. Now I can start going after these clues. 
all three of them are out there. The master will reveal himself once all three plot cards are turned over. That was Xander. Now we go to Buffy. Buffy's at this location here. I guess we could take care of that vamp. Or I could go up there and take care of the vamp at Restfield Cemetery or come over here to UC Sunnydale. We'll use Buffy's special ability. Use that special slayage and use her move action to come to UC Sunnydale. Use her fight action that will dust one of these vampires because of her wooden stake that she's holding. And her special ability stuns the remaining baddies at the location, which will be that other vampire. Her special token will trigger our next event. A demon terrorizes the bronze and a vampire lurks at City Hall. Spike Cat, catch a break. The bronze is attracting a lot of baddies this time. Place this card beside the game board until the end of this round. Demons must be stunned before they can be slain this round. I'll put that, I'll put it right here on the corner of the board in plain sight so I don't forget about it. We have one, two demons out right now, and they must be stunned first. Well, stunning demons... Hmm. Okay. That's the tome. The tome allows you to do a search action to stun a demon in any location. I'm gonna have Spike get out of the bronze for a while. He's been hanging out there a lot. Have him go to the Summer's residence to get ready to use these healing actions. We gotta get rid of some of these wounds before we start flipping these clues because things can get out of troll pretty quick on the apocalypse track once the big bad starts coming into play. Willow is at that location right now and she can use her special ability which is a fight action. She can slay a baddie in her location even or if she has magic supplies in her hand, which she does. She's holding magic supplies. And I don't want to use her special yet. No, we'll hold on to that. Have her do a fight action, and because of that, that'll clear this vampire out and slay it. Xander has one action left. He's right where that townie is. There's an unprotected townie up there at Restfield Cemetery. Or I could move him to City Hall, but he only has one action left. Where should I place him? I will place him in Restfield Cemetery. Well, I could search or get magic supplies here because that vampire is stunned. Oh, let me think about it. I've decided I'll move him to Restfield Cemetery. He's going to end up taking a wound when he's there because of it, unless we can get rid of that vamp. But I don't want to lose another townie, and that'll put him in position to, to get that clue in the next round. Taking us to Buffy's final turn. What do I want to do with Buffy? I have Buffy here at UC Sunnydale. Where there is a clue, but I want to wait till the next round to reveal that because a lot of the clue or a lot of the plot cards that come out take effect at the end of a round. So if I do it at the beginning, that'll give me the rest of the round to try and make moves to minimize the agony that's going to be caused by them. I could move her down here to Rosedale Cemetery. That way we could rescue that townie at the end of the round. If that townie doesn't have someone protecting him, he's going to move to the crypt. Because of this passive location, I could take out that stunned vamp while I'm there. 
I've decided to stay where I'm at. I'll use her final action to attack and dust that stunned vamp here at UC Sunnydale because I want to leave her there for this clue and you see Sunnydale you can draw three items with the special location ability and since we're going to be revealing these plot cards you'll see that we're going to need certain items to take care of these plot cards which is how we attack the big bad that will move us over to Spike who's at the Summer's residence I'm going to use the location ability to heal two wounds from the track. I'm going to use Willow while she's there also. Get a couple more wounds off the track. Xander's done. Buffy's done. Back to Spike. Now Spike, what would be a good location for him to go to? There's only one wound that I could remove so I don't want to waste that right now. I don't want to use his, well, I can't use his amulet because his special ability is not available. I could discard a tome to get another artifact, but I want to wait till I see what I'm going to need for my plot cards. This townie's okay because that vamp is stunned. There's a vampire there, but Xander is in that location already. I think I can move to... I could move to the catacombs. I'm going to use his action... Yeah, I'll use his action to move to the catacombs. That way, at least we'll have one town. Well, that demon's going to move twice. Both of these demons are going to move twice. Darn it. So that townie is going to have something next to him. I'll move down here then. I'll move down to Rosedale Cemetery and hopefully be able to save that townie. I'm rethinking my decision. Maybe I want Spike to move to City Hall instead. No, we'll stay there. That leaves us with Willow, who all she has left is her special token. And I can use it for a basic ability if I want to. Or I could use her special ability. But then I would get rid of her final and only magic supplies that we have in the entire group. It's still going to trigger an event card either way. Where would I like Willow to be? Maybe I'll have her come to UC Sunnydale also. Or I could use this fight action. Yeah, I could use this. I could use this fight action on my holy water to stun a vampire in any location. And that would take care of this one at Restfield Cemetery. So we won't take a wound right away. So yeah, I'm glad I saw that at the last second there. Don't know why I was worried about that now. That will end our players actions. All the tokens have been used. The big bad has not revealed himself so he will not have an action. We have no more monsters of the week to deal with so we'll go right into the turns with baddies. And I don't think there are any unstunned ones anywhere so we're not going to take any wounds and no townies are going to die. But the baddies that are available will move. This vamp is going to move to the magic box because there's an adjacent unprotected townie. And these demons will move. There's nothing adjacent. Okay, this is adjacent. So there's no townies adjacent, but there is a character adjacent. So they will move there, and this demon has nothing available adjacent to it. So it will use both of its moves to come over to the catacombs, which is the closest townie. Yep. 
all the baddies have gone. So we'll go to the end of the round, which will cause us to flip all of our stunned baddies back over. Then we'll do our end of round instructions on the big bads board, which means we have to put a vampire at each location with a clue. That's the only downside to waiting, especially with the big bad, is vampires keep showing up in those locations. But we're still doing okay so far. If there's a townie at a location with a character and no enemies, which we have one here, so that townie from Res Rosedale Cemetery is rescued. We will shuffle the discard pile back into the deck. The first player token will get passed. There's nothing really going on at any of these passive locations. That townie can't be rescued anyway. And that brings us to the end of the round. This event card that was in play about stunning the demons goes away at the end of the round. And we need to flip our tokens, shuffle the item deck, and go into our next turn, which is going to probably get really crazy because we're going to start revealing the big bad plots. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to click on these links and consider supporting this channel through Patreon. Also, Please like, share, subscribe, and check out the other videos on the channel. Your support is appreciated.